Zimbabwe's land reform program changed the farming landscape, breaking up large commercial farms and handing land to thousands of smallholder farmers. More than 80,000 of them have taken up tobacco, helping propel it back to the country's top export. Conducive weather and geography, as well as low access costs, have contributed to their success. Tobacco grows in, in kind of sandy soils, sandy loam soils and so on. Where you cannot grow, you have very limited options to grow other, other crops. Uh, otherwise you would grow um, you know, high value crops that would need a lot of investment in terms of technology and so on. So tobacco is easier because it's a crop uh, that has got uh, an international market uh, and also uh, that the smallholder farmer is able to grow with the minimum investment in terms of cap capex, capital investment. From the fields, the cured golden leaf is brought to the floors where a ready market awaits. International merchants have lined up about 700 million US dollars to buy this season's crop. Many of the deliveries are under contract arrangements which have enabled growth of the sector. Contract farming becomes a key in that uh, um, the farmers who would otherwise not access financing from banks can now access financing in another form, in the form of uh, contract farming where they get inputs, they get uh, working capital, they produce the crop and then uh, after sales then the cost of the support is deducted and the farmer gets their profit. Disputes over acquired land have previously hampered lending to farmers. Well, it's been nearly 20 years since Zimbabwe's land reform program began, and the tobacco story has been its biggest success. It is the country's richest cash crop and a source of livelihood for millions, directly and indirectly. So despite all the controversy that surrounds it, tobacco remains the most important crop for this country. Farai Mwakutuya, CGTN, Harare, Zimbabwe.